can you get rid of your type 2 diabetes for good? Yes, and we've known this for quite some time, but I wanted today to go over the research by Dr. Roy Taylor, who has also written a book on the subject. But it's important to understand because we, we have a bit of a fixed idea of how we get diabetes. And um, historically, we thought, well, we eat a lot of sugar, we eat a lot of glucose, and um, the, poor, the poor pancreas and trying to produce insulin to uh, deal with this glucose just finally gets tired. And so it can't respond to the glucose coming in. That's called insulin resistance. And then we have diabetes. So what Dr. Taylor looked at was he saw a correlation between people with type 2 diabetes and the fact that they had fatty livers. And so we know this is the case. So uh, fatty liver disease is seen with people, well, not just with type 2 diabetes, but also with heart disease. So the, the liver gets infiltrated with fat, and due to that, it can't work as well. And he also saw that the pancreas got infiltrated with fat. So we had fatty liver, and we had fatty pancreas. So what he looked at was the fact that li the liver actually helps maintain your blood sugar. And we kind of forget about that sometimes. So you eat a meal with glucose, and um, the, the liver actually, when there's, um, well, the blood glucose rises because you, you ate the glucose. And then what happens if there's excess, the liver stores it um, as something called glucagon, but it's the storage of energy. That, that the liver um, is responsible for. And over time, if there's a lot of storage, what can happen is the, the liver can, can get fatty, and again, over time, the pancreas does as well. It's just sort of too much of a burden upon it. So his theory was, well, what if we could get the fat out of the liver and the fat out of the pancreas? Now, what he did is not necessarily what I think you should do, but this is what he did. So he put people on a very low calorie diet. It was about seven or 800 calories a day for um, zero carb is better. Well, I, I don't know if zero carb is better, Bobby, but we'll talk about that. Um, so he put them on a very low calorie diet for uh, eight weeks. And what he found was that after seven days, their not only was their blood glucose normalized, but their liver in seven days got, got back to normal. So they didn't have a fatty liver in seven days, which is pretty impressive. And over the course of the eight weeks of the program, the pancreas was a little slower to respond, but it similarly responded, and as what he called it, the insulin-producing cells of the pancreas woke up and started producing insulin again. Because the theory has been is that once the pancreas gets to the point where it's really not able to produce much insulin at all, that it's, it's kind of dead and buried and there's nothing you can do about it. Now, there's way too many studies showing that type 2 diabetes can be reversed, so we know that's not necessarily the case. But his study, again, proved it. So um, what I wanted to discuss with you is where do you fall? Are you already type 2 diabetes? Are you somebody who, as a woman, had gestational diabetes? Are you someone who's been put in the pre-diabetic category? And have you been told you have a fatty liver? Any of those. So if any of those is you, then listen to what I think is a good plan. And he, he also talked about um, what's called your fat, personalized fat threshold. So this is very interesting because it gets to this personal level of when you have too much fat in your body and you start then storing it in the liver and you get fatty liver. There are people that you can look at and they seem quite overweight and they don't have a fatty liver. So they, you could call them lucky, that their personal fat threshold is higher. So they can hold more body fat before they get into this category of fatty liver and then leading to type 2 diabetes and probably cardiac disease as well. You could also see people who, uh, on the face of just looking at them, don't look overweight. Uh, we call them the skinny fat people because they actually still have too much fat, but, but they're not skinny or just not by, by appearances, by your eyeball, do not appear to be overweight. But their fat threshold is too high for them. So these are people who are pre-diabetic or diabetic. and. Uh, they're, not, they're not overweight, but they are over fat for them. So people, in other words, can have varying thresholds. And 
the whole point of uh, Dr. Taylor's work was you have to get below your personal fat threshold, which you can achieve by doing what? So he did this dramatic diet and then after eight weeks when they got below their personal fat threshold and um, their pancreas woke up and their liver wasn't a fatty liver anymore, then he was just having them watch their, their weight. That's a, a slippery slope, I think, because you really want to find something where you can maintain below your personal fat threshold a, a lifestyle that you enjoy, you can maintain, and you're not just sort of waiting for how much longer do I have to do this before I can stop. So let's talk about some basics. Refined sugar is n never anybody's friend, so you might as well take that uh, very low to no. Uh, 12 grams is my threshold per day. I don't want my patients to go over 12 grams per day. Less is great. Um, alcohol, you want to keep that very low if not eliminated. So a social drink once a week or so is fine. You really don't want it more than that. Sorry. Um, refined carbohydrates. So this is not zero carb, Bobby, who talked earlier. This is simple carbohydrates. So remember the simple carbohydrates are refined grains. They're also desserts. They're these highly processed and it can be highly processed with rice starch, potato starch. It can be white flour. Uh, I hate to just pick on white because <laughs> I once had a child say to me, but what about cauliflower? Cauliflower is white. I'm like, oh, you're right. You're so smart. Um, but these refined grains that are processed are not your friend because they're going to really spike that blood glucose and they're going to put more stress on the liver to, to hold on to more of this glucagon. And then over time, the, the liver gets infiltrated again with fat and then that, that shifts to the pancreas as well. So what do we have? We have sugar, we have alcohol, we have refined grains, and then we're going to add highly processed foods to that mix as well. What about the protein side of things? We don't want processed meats like salami, bologna, pastrami. These are meats that are not only high in saturated fat, but the chemicals in them are known to, they're in the carcinogenic category. So these are, these are not your friend and anything that's that inflammatory is going to put a lot of stress on your overall system, including your liver. So we, we don't want to do that. When it comes to saturated fat, like red meat, coconut oil, palm oil, uh, a little bit in eggs. Eggs don't have that much, but the fatty meats like beef and pork, you want to keep that less than about 7% of your total calories. So you got to do a little math. You got to look at how much you eat. Um, every calorie, every gram of fat is nine calories. So, you know, you can, do, you can do a little bit of math and a little bit of an estimate and see basically where you fall. Because as soon as you get above that seven, eight percent, you're moving into the risk for heart disease and stroke and you, you don't want to do that, obviously. Now, with um, other fats, we're looking at monounsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, and I've been going over these a lot, but quickly, we've got olive oil, we've got avocados in the monounsaturated, in the polyunsaturated, we've got flax seeds and chia seeds and walnuts and fatty fish. So. You can look these up. These are, these are your good fats, which are not going to make you fat. They're not going to get you in trouble. Fats are very satisfying, you know, so the satiety factor of fats is very high. They make your tummy feel full and, and you're satisfied and you're not looking for the simple carbs and the sugar. Um, so what did I leave out? So we did all of that. Let me see what else if I, oh, yes to fruits and veggies, of course, whole foods. So yes to the whole food, the real food, the unadulterated food. Um, I weigh, oh, I'll have to answer that a little bit later. That's a long question, but I will see it. Um, and let's see, no processed meats. So yes to veggies, fresh veggies, fresh fruit, beans, legumes, um, the real whole food. Now, if you say beans, oh my gosh, I can't do beans. They, they give me too much gas. Uh, realize a couple things. One, it might be that you just don't have the enzymes, and so you need to build those up. But you can start with very small amounts of beans or legumes like lentils and then slowly build your way up and your body will accommodate to them and they're great sources of protein. 
The one thing I wanted to end with was uh, something called compensatory eating. This is what Dr. Taylor brought up when he was asked about exercise. And the, the, his answer might surprise you a little bit because somebody's like, well, what about exercise? And he said, well, do whatever you've been doing, but I didn't recommend that anybody start an exercise program um, at the time of really trying to get their, their weight down, okay? And so where he was coming from, and you just have to see if this is true for you, because I exercise five to six days a week, and uh, I don't have this issue, but it's more of a mindset than it is something you're stuck with. But what he said is that when somebody hasn't exercised, and then they begin exercising, there's this factor of compensatory eating because they are burning more calories and they feel like they deserve a little pat on the back for exercising and burning more calories and, and by virtue of that, they can eat more. So if you can get that out of your head that you don't need to eat more by exercising um, and quite sed sedentary, yeah. So it's true, a lot of us are sedentary, a lot of us are sitting all day, so that was a good question. To finish up on the exercise, um, it's very important that we exercise and I think if you can, you know, you can start walking, you want to do some resistance training, especially as you get older, you don't need a gym membership for any of this. There's a lot of great videos that are going to tell you um, things you can do. You can get like exercise bands, you can get light weights, um, you can do step ups, you can, <laughs> you can create all this stuff at home, honestly, and, and get some really good uh, overall exercise for yourself because we are all too sedentary and it's not doing us any good. Just keep in mind that if you're really trying to reverse your diabetes, the compensatory eating factor is something you're going to have to look out for so you're not um, increasing your calories by, by virtue of, of exercise. So this is exciting work. We've known that type 2 diabetes is reversible, but we, we, we just definitely had that concept of too much sugar and, and, um, and that was wearing out the pancreas, but this is getting into the fat content of overwhelming the liver and the pancreas with fatty infiltration, which can come from a combination of factors, not just eating simple sugar. So that's exciting. There's so much we, that we can do uh, to reverse this disease, which is a major killer of Americans. It's a horrible disease to suffer with and it's reversible. So. If um, you find yourself in this category, you want some help to reverse your diabetes, definitely reach out to my team. That's why we're here. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so more people can see it.